Hello friends! So recently, I remembered about early YouTube viral videos. It just kind of came to me. Like, what the heck was that? And if you're in your mid-twenties or older, you probably have similar shadowy recollections of this era of the internet that I do. And maybe you've seen articles in the past couple of years come out like, this is the th finger baby now. What? Old viral video sold as an NFT? The real story 12 years later of... And I'm gonna get into all of that. I'm gonna talk about some of the most iconic videos of the time, their impact at the time, the stories behind them, as well as how they've influenced the creators over a decade later. But honestly, what really freaks me out is that some of you out there watching this video, where are your parents? You are probably the same age or younger than some of these videos and maybe you've never even heard of some of them. Or worse, your parents show them to you, like, look at this, sonny boy, this is what the internet used to be like. The passage of time disgusts me. But before we go any further, I gotta tell you a little bit about this video sponsor, Helix Sleep. Helix makes premium mattresses and bedding that are perfectly suited to your unique needs. The first step is filling out their sleep quiz so that your mattress can be customized to fit your sleep preferences and body type, as well as those of your partner, and what kinds of sleepers you both are. You can personalize your mattress even more by adding the Glaciotex cooling cover. It's a great way to keep cool during these toasty toasty summer months. I even got two new pillows as well, so I feel like I've had a full bed makeover courtesy of Helix. That being said, half of it is still taken up by a 10 pound bingus on a nightly basis. Helix matched me with their Twilight Luxe mattress, which is their firmest one. I need a firm mattress because my spine is filled with demons. My entire back really is filled with demons. If I sleep in a bad position or on a non-optimal surface, it will just tie itself up into 10,000 painful knots. My spine demons are extremely picky. And I've been sleeping on my Twilight Lux for about a month now, feeling great, sleeping great, 10 out of 10. My cat though, I think he rates it an 11 out of 10 because he sleeps until like 2 p.m. every single day tucked in there like a little human baby. What do you have to say? What do you have to say for yourself? Your mattress will be conveniently shipped right to your door. It comes in a convenient compact box and then expands once you unwrap it. The setup is super easy and straightforward. Just make sure you are smarter than me and actually read the instructions before you try it. But you know what? Everything's been amazing since then. When you get a Helix Sleep mattress, you'll get a 100 night sleep trial. You can sleep on it for exactly 100 nights just to make sure that you really do love it. And if you don't, they'll pick it up for you and you'll get a full refund. It also comes with a 10 year warranty and there are financing options and flexible payment plans. I am loving my Helix Twilight Locks. And with all of the different personalized options out there, I'm sure you would probably love one too. So if you're in the market for a new mattress, why not check it out? Remember to click on the link below or go to helixsleep.com slash for up to $200 off your Helix Sleep mattress as well as two free pillows. And now back to your regularly scheduled content. So what is a viral video? Well, when we say that something is viral, we technically just mean that it has a lot of views. But when I say YouTube viral video, Again, if you're around my age, if you experience this era, when I say YouTube viral video, that brings up something very specific to you. We don't tend to call popular internet phenomena viral anymore because it's just kind of become meaningless. Things on the internet get millions upon millions of views, get parodied and remade and repeated, and even make their way into our everyday vocabulary on a constant basis. They're just memes. And we know how fast the meme cycle is these days. Well, YouTube viral videos were the first like huge memes on that scale. In 2008, you could reference chocolate rain and some kid on the playground would know it. Or maybe your mom showed you David after dentist because her quirky coworker Janice has been sending it around again. And that was like, super cool because it was new at the time. The internet was just this kind of quirky little place for messing around, but suddenly it was uniting people on this mass scale. So yes, the viral video as we know it is dead. It feels like extraordinary viral things on that scale don't happen anymore, but that's just because they happen constantly. We don't even notice it anymore. I reference memes in casual conversation with people all the time without even thinking about it. There is another element to the death of the viral video though, and that is the change over the past 10 to 15 years in the way that we use YouTube. Meme culture, the spirit behind the viral videos is, is clearly very much still alive. It's just extremely commonplace and fast paced compared to then. And YouTube is obviously still alive and well. It's just that the specific overlap of those two things where you have YouTube creating memes 
it seems to be no longer a thing. And that's because the way we use this website has completely changed from 15 years ago. YouTube published a blog post in June, 2022, which was like a month ago. Seems very timely. Thank you, YouTube. But they published this blog post detailing their analysis of trends over the pandemic and the interests of Gen Z viewers saying, we found that digital culture is now all about personality relevant content. In fact, 65% of Gen Z online 18 to 24 year olds agree that the content personally relevant to them is more important than the content that a lot of people are talking about individual viral videos, the Davids, the Charlies, and yes, even the Foxes that broke through in the past are becoming increasingly less central to trends. You just don't scroll YouTube looking for three minute videos of funny ducks and drugged children like you used to. You look at the most recent videos posted by people you're subscribed to or some intriguing content pertaining to your interests that YouTube will endlessly feed you to keep you around to look at as many ads as possible. So join me now, friends, for a glimpse into a much simpler time. Cheers. Cheers. Oh my god. Cheers. Shoes was created by actor and comedian Liam Kyle Sullivan, portraying a character called Kelly who would star in a number of his YouTube videos. She wants shoes. It, it's a mind-numbingly repetitive song about Kelly shopping for shoes. You know, there's just something about the way that she says shoes that just sticks in your brain for 15 years. We all remembered when Kyle came back in 2020 to make his masks version. Shoes is considered one of the first YouTube viral videos ever and a harbinger of what was to come. The only comparable video that had come out before it was an SNL short called Lazy Sunday. Funny little easily shareable music video that did really well on YouTube, right? But Lazy Sunday was produced by SNL, it aired on mainstream television and was only posted to YouTube afterwards. Whereas Shoes did just as well if not better on YouTube, and it was just... Some guy just made that. Suddenly, we're all starting to realize that the internet is this place where the chaotic, no-budget brainchild of one guy can rival an SNL sketch. And in that way, Shoes kind of represents the beginning of the the online video era. And it makes me wonder about a lot more. The prevalence of sketch comedy and parody songs and men in ratty wigs that characterized so much early YouTube content like, what about YouTube as a platform just naturally lends itself to that sort of content? Nothing really. Was it the early influence of shoes that laid the foundation for the style of so many early YouTubers? Hey, Charlie. Hey, Charlie, wake up. Yeah, Charlie, you silly sleepy head, wake up. Uh, oh God, you guys. This had better be pretty freaking important. Charlie the Unicorn. The video story follows Charlie, a unicorn with a deep middle-aged uncle sort of voice who perpetually has the vibe of being hungover and awake against his will, plus his two deeply annoying companions taking him on an adventure to Candy Mountain. There's mythical beasts, there's a musical number, and in the end he wakes up with his kidney having been stolen. I don't really find Charlie the Unicorn funny as an adult. The voices are just so grating. Found a map to Candy Mountain. Candy Mountain, Charlie. Yeah, Charlie. It is a flash animated video created by Jason Steele, originally uploaded to Newgrounds in 2005, and then later re-uploaded to YouTube in 2006 by I think just some random guy who found it on Newgrounds initially. Steele has said that the video was a birthday present for his mother because he had recently lost all of his possessions and money in Hurricane Katrina, but still wanted to give his mother something for her birthday. And that is apparently how we got Charlie the Unicorn. And this thing was hugely popular for years. It was followed by Charlie the Unicorn 2, three, and four, a parody series by the original creator, not to mention the many, many parodies and memes created by other users, a grand finale series which finished in 2021 and raised over $200,000 on Kickstarter for the production. It had merch. It really managed to grow from like the success of one video into this massive decades spanning brand in a way that a lot of these super early viral videos didn't? Good on Jason Steele, I guess, for foreseeing the potential that was there. There are so many lines from Charlie the Unicorn and the sequel and the parody series that are just burned into my brain forever because people repeated them constantly in those horrible voices. Oh, Charlie. Shut the fuck up, little Timmy. Get your own sense of humor.
Badgers is a flash animation created by Jaunty Picking and originally uploaded to Newgrounds in 2003. And it was very, very popular on Newgrounds before YouTube even came along in 2005. However, I'm including it on this list of YouTube viral videos because it's reposting on YouTube and all of the parodies that sprung up around it on YouTube are absolutely essential to it being as huge as it is. The original Badgers video is only 30 seconds long, however, it can loop indefinitely, so you will find one hour, 10 hour, 24 hour versions of it all on YouTube. I will confess that I have some endearing feelings towards this one. There was a period where, when I must have been like 12 or 13 where my friends were just obsessed with Badgers and would try and sing it for as long as possible because it loops forever. Yes, Charlie the Unicorn is annoying, this one is funny. It's my channel. I am the sole arbiter of what sucks. A big part of the popularity of Badgers is attributed to the fact that its simplicity makes it so easy to parody and repeat in all sorts of ways. I remember people doing a dance to it or do doing the like little T-pose thing to it. Um, I remember the Harry Potter version where they're like, oh, Snape, it's Snape. And those are just the ones that are like burned into my brain forever. But upon Googling, there there is like every version under the sun of this thing. Let rain. Some stay dry and others feel the pain. Chocolate rain. Chocolate rain is a song by singer-songwriter and voice actor Tay Zonday. He went on to be a pretty big YouTuber and active in the early YouTube community after the success of this video. It simply features him in a recording studio singing into the mic. Chocolate rain was seen as very quirky and endearing. His distinctive deep voice and its contrast with his very young looks, the way that he moves away from the mic to breathe, the wacky XD so random lyrics. Yeah, so Chocolate Rain is like blatantly about institutionalized racism. Chocolate rain. Zoom the camera out and see the light. Chocolate rain. Or has to be falling yesterday. Chocolate rain. Only in the past is what they say. Chocolate rain. With your neighborhood insurance rates. Chocolate rain. Makes us happy living in a gay chocolate rain. Made me cross the street the other day, chocolate rain. I remember the video universally being seen as something kind of light and funny, something that was widely parodied, joked about, quoted by annoying children trying to imitate Tayson Day's voice. It must have been just a little bit frustrating, but I don't know. He seems satisfied for the, the people who get it to get it and the people who don't whatever. His experience and his opinions post Chocolate Rain fame are really, really interesting. In an interview with Vice in 2016, he says, when you're hot, the whole world tries to get on your coattails and get a piece of that. Three or four major music labels asked me to sign with them. Just dealing with all of that, with all of the people contacting me was daunting. I didn't have anyone's example to emulate. I couldn't look at Rebecca Black and be like, oh, what did she do? What did Anton Dodson do when this happened to him? There were no breadcrumbs to follow because it was pretty much the first time anyone had gone from that level of obscurity to that level of attention through the means of online content. He also says something very similar to what was said in that YouTube blog post about the move away from viral videos towards more personalized content. I think we're in an era of confessional media with internet content. It's all about Snapchat and vlogging. This was 2016, so there are probably more timely examples now, but You've got to have this personal everyday relationship with your fans. Chocolate Rain was something that blew up for being larger than life. It was like, what is that guy doing? There's a mythos to the brand and character. And that is it, right? That, that's, that's it. These sorts of viral videos came before influencer culture, before internet famous people were expected to have every single social media platform and be active on all of them all at once and share every aspect of their lives. There was mystery, intrigue, mythos, as he says, to these early videos made by people that you didn't know and had no way of knowing. Ha <laughs> ha, Charlie. Charlie bit me. Charlie bit my finger is a video of a baby biting his brother's finger and then the brother sticking his finger back in Charlie's mouth and shockingly getting bitten again. It is a thrilling, 55 seconds. The boy's father uploaded it to YouTube simply to make it easier to share with long distance family members. Its success is truly random. It's it's just someone's innocuous family video. It's not even funny. I don't know, maybe get someone who likes babies to weigh in on that, but I don't enjoy watching it very much. Charlie Bit My Finger is known for holding the most viewed video ever on YouTube spot. In 2011, it was still up there on the most viewed list with these huge mainstream music videos like Justin Bieber's Baby and Bad Romance. However, its reign is long over now. In 2017, the family threw a 10 year birthday for the video. The boys reenact the video and they and their dad talk about the experience and say it's been good and that they're grateful for the experience of having created 
the iconic Charlie bit my finger. Then in 2021, the video was sold as an NFT for over $760,000 and the original was hence removed from YouTube. Learning this made me go, wait, so is someone gonna get mad if I include clips from the video in this video? But apparently no, that's not how it works. I don't know anything about NFTs. So a very helpful New York Times article explained, NFT buyers are not usually acquiring copyrights, trademarks, or the sole ownership of whatever they purchase. They're mostly bought with the idea that their copy is authentic. So we can still watch the video anytime we want and no one is gonna enforce otherwise. It just matters apparently that the original was taken down. It actually turns out that a good number of old viral videos and uh, memes and iconic internet moments have been sold as NFTs, including another one on this list, so stay tuned. It's just, it's so ungodly stupid to me. Well, okay, the person who bought it is ungodly stupid. If they're paying for these kids' university or whatever, hey, good for the kids. Gaslight gate, keep girl boss, Charlie. You're lucky she even performed for you bastards! Leave Britney alone! Leave Britney alone is this highly emotional plea against the harassment that Britney Spears was facing in the mainstream media as well as online. It was made by Kara Cunningham. And if you're sitting there like, wait, I swear, I swear it was someone else who made Leave Britney alone. The video was associated with her dead name for a very long time, but she came out as a trans woman in 2021 and Kara Cunningham is the name that she uses now. So that's how I will be referring to her. But no, you're not going crazy if you remember a different name being attributed to the video. She made the video at the age of 19 in her bedroom. She had some experience at that point making videos on Mindspace and YouTube for a small audience, but absolutely nothing like this. The video just exploded out of nowhere and became everyone's favorite cringy punching bag for a while. And now I know some of y'all are youngins out there and I myself was eight at the time, so I don't really remember a lot of the 2007 Britney Spears drama that well either. But essentially her entire life and mental health were falling apart very publicly and the media were absolute vultures treating her like a spectacle rather than a human person, very much creating a situation for her to get worse and probably wanting her to get worse because it got them clicks or it sold them magazines back in ye old 2007. And Cara's video was universally the butt of jokes, despite it being a plea for empathy and her being so visibly upset in it. Like how much of 2000s humor was just bullying? My excuse for laughing at that stuff at the time is that I was eight. These were adults. She said that she specifically faced a lot of backlash from the gay community for being bad representation of them and was even physically assaulted in gay bars on numerous occasions because of the video. She said, Fucking tragically, might I add, she said, I didn't really get anything from the video other than to be put in a box for the next 14 years. And yet, the video has aged so well. Like, I don't think anybody now would look at that and think that she looks insane or make fun of her. Do we really want to see a 25 year old woman leave behind two children and die? Have we learned nothing from Anna Nicole Smith? I know it's hard to see Britney Spears as a human being, but trust me, she is. She's a person. She's like you or I. All I care about is Britney's well-being. And Britney, all I want is for you to get well. Her opinions in the video are the mainstream now. The Free Britney movement in 2021 was all over social media, people raising awareness about how terrible what happened to Britney Spears in 2007 was and how she was still suffering from it. There's even examples, I think, of people being like, oh, lol, Kara Cunningham was right all along. Like. That doesn't free her from 14 years of harassment though, it was so not worth it. Society fucking growing an empathy brain cell now does not make that any better. Kara sold Leave Britney Alone as an NFT in 2021 for just over $40,000. She says that she did it to reclaim the video, which had brought her nothing but misery up until that point. And you know what? Good for her. She said that she used the money to help her grandmother and to finance her transition. <laughs> Snipe, snipe, Savarus snipe. Dumbledore! Snipe, snipe, Savarus snipe. Dumbledore! Snipe. Everyone knew the mysterious ticking noise when I was in middle school. Everyone. I think I remember kids performing it in a school talent show once. There is a huge amount of love for Severus Snape. How do you deal with that? Um, well, I'm not singing now. <laughs> The Mysterious Ticking Noise is the most well-known Potter Puppet Pals episode, although it is actually the sixth in the cinematic universe. Potter Puppet Pals, the... It's still fun to say. Potter Puppet Pals was a YouTube series created by Neil Cicerega. Yeah, that one. 
Same guy. The first two episodes were posted to Newgrounds in 2003, but later re-uploaded to YouTube in 2006, and it became an ongoing series from there. Episodes tended to be released a couple times a year, from 2006 to 2011, and then there was a few later trickles of content as well, including as recently as 2019, so we may still have not seen the end of Potter Puppet Pals. Although, we probably have, just given the current climate around J.K. Rowling and Harry Potter, it's just, it's not really something that people find fun anymore. I used to really like and follow this series when I was a kid, so I rewatched quite a few of the episodes, actually. They're not all like the mysterious ticking noise that most of them do have normal dialogue and plots going on, and for the most part, they hold up kind of well. They're pretty funny and well-written. Why do we celebrate birth? We mark the dates of our own violent exiles from the warmth of womb to the cold of life. I once saw a cat give birth. I still keep my placenta in the shack. And then he got tired of pinching me. Lovely story, Ron. Hey guys, I found a door. Let's leave through it. I'm actually really obsessed with the Potter Puppet Pals characterization of Harry as like this belligerent, self-obsessed bully of a male protagonist. Like, Neil, your third eye was open on that one. <laughs> Keyboard Cat is just so delightful. Like, I watch it and I am genuinely transported to a simpler time. Like, live, laugh, love, bitch. This is what it's about. Some of you may remember the internet collectively mourning Keyboard Cat's death in 2018, and I'm here to tell you that that is a lie. It's not true. Because Keyboard Cat has been dead since 1987. Keyboard Cat has been dead for 35 slutty slutty years. The video may have been posted to YouTube and gone viral in 2009, originally titled Cool Cat. But it's a VHS from 1985. The original cat in the video's name was Fatso, and his owner, Charlie Schmidt, was manipulating his arms underneath the little t-shirt. And that's... that's the whole video. It's just delightful. My pores are cleared. My crops... The water. After the video went viral in 2009, Schmidt's other cat named Bento took up the mantle of Keyboard Cat, donning the little shirt for later YouTube videos and other media appearances. Bento was the cat who then passed away in 2018. But the spirit of Keyboard Cat is immortal. The video became a meme after a video was posted to YouTube of a man falling down an escalator with the footage of Fatso edited in at the end, entitled Play him off, Keyboard Cat. That's how it came to be called, Keyboard Cat. It's also how the video became a common response to some kind of failure or humiliation online. Before we had Alexa play Despacito, we had Play him off, Keyboard Cat. Does that make sense? Does that make sense in your little Gen Z brains? I say, being ar arguably Gen Z myself. A duck walked up to a lemonade stand And he said to the man running the stand Hey, bum bum bum, got any grapes? The Duck Song. It's this horribly annoying, repetitive song with accompanying shitty MS Paint animation that goes around and around like this forever. The duck comes back every single day and goes, Hey, bum bum bum, got any grapes? And the man gets increasingly pissed off. The man eventually takes the duck to the store to buy some grapes so that his living hell will end, and the duck goes, Nah, how about we grab some lemonade? I despise everything about this and not in the endearing way. I was trying to think of some videos to talk about in this video, so I asked Kristen if she remembered any old viral videos and she was like, I swear there was one with a duck. Like, it was horrible. And I was like, oh my God, you're right. There was one with a duck and it was horrible. So I'm Googling like YouTube viral video duck. And the moment I hear, Got any grapes? The audio for the Duck Song video was created by songwriter Bryden Odin and uploaded to YouTube, but it didn't go viral until another user named Forrest Whaley, username ForestFire101, might I add, created the animated version we all know and hate. Odin and Whaley went on to make The Duck Song 2, The Duck Song 3, as well as a children's book, which gives the duck a tragic backstory in which his life is saved by a nice man who gives him grapes. So that's why he torments humanity forever by asking for grapes? Why can't I touch it? Because it'll mess up the stitches. You have four eyes. Yeah. I, I feel funny. Why is this happening to me? It's okay, bud. It's just from the medicine. Okay? David After Dentist is a chronicle of a seven-year-old boy's reaction to anesthesia after coming out of dental surgery. I remember this video really influenced a lot of people's perspectives on surgery and anesthesia. Like, 
when I got my wisdom teeth out in 2015, I think, I remember everyone being like, oh, you're, you're gonna be David after dentist afterwards. Uh huh, I can't wait for that. It's just one of those things that was just like in the cultural consciousness, you know? Just like with the Charlie bit my finger situation, David's dad says that he uploaded the video so that he could, he could more easily share it with friends and family. And for some godforsaken reason, it had millions of views within days. It was a week and we were in New York for the Today Show already, doing interviews, TV shows, the word meme had like just been coined. I just didn't think much past. A lot of people thought the video was funny and they wanted to talk to me about it. They told their story to Buzzfeed in 2021. Teenage David says that he views the video as a blessing, which has brought him a lot of fun experiences. He also reveals that he was on ketamine in the video. This changes my perspective of the video entirely because that is not your standard light anesthesia for a minor procedure. As someone who has been on ketamine when I got chest tubes put in before, Oh my God, buddy, I feel you, holy shit. Stay in your seat. That is going to be all for today. Like and subscribe or whatever. I also have a Patreon Discord server where I do live streams every single Wednesday. We hang out, I answer questions and look at your memes and we play some games. Come hang out and beat me at online cards against humanity sometime. Thank you so much for watching friends and I'll see you in another video very soon.